Is it moving? Yeah, it's moving. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, brother. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to go out here and try to witness to these sinners. It's pretty cold out. But again, if they'll stand in line for a drink, we'll just stand in line to give them a gospel track. So. Okay, so uh, Zach's going to preach first. Zach, uh, what do you think about tonight? I think these kids will stand in line for anything. <laughs> I mean, it's cold out here. Mm -hmm. It is. What, what's the temperature at right now? I think it's about 15 degrees or something like that. 15 degrees? Wind, wind chill's probably... Probably close to... It's probably single digits, I'd say. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would say because it's... I think they said something about maybe 26 mile an hour gust. They don't care. They want their alcohol. It's witnessing, it's oh, witnessing yeah. weather. Is it on? Yeah. that place. I used to love alcohol too. And the Bible told me that I was going to go to hell for my drunkenness. You know, the Bible says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you know that? That drunkards go to hell? Drunkards burn in hell forever? Don't be a drunkard. The Bible says that if you practice drunkenness, you're going to go to hell. You can't go to heaven. Even if you say you know Jesus, even if you say you love Jesus, it doesn't matter. If you, if you practice drunkenness, drunkenness, you're going to go to hell. Well, if you're gay, you've got to repent of your homosexuality, you're not going to go to heaven. Homosexuals go to hell too. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, it, it considers homosexuals as unrighteous. The drunkard is just as bad as the homosexual, is just as bad as the liar, just as bad as the murderer. They all go to hell. The Bible says it's been appointed to men once to die. What's going to happen when you die? You're going to meet your Creator. You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged for your works. Now you're going to be judged by Jesus, man. You won't be mocking on judgment day, man. Jesus is going to look at you and say, Depart from me. I never knew you. You who sin. Yeah, he's going to throw you in hell, man. You've got to repent for your sins. You see, Jesus died for someone like you who hates him. He died for someone like you who hates him. He got flogged, he got spit on, he got beat, he died on a cross for some arrogant person like you who won't love him back. Some arrogant sinners like you who won't love him back. You know, the Bible says that if you don't confess and forsake your sins, you're going to hell. The Bible says the soul who sins shall surely die. You will surely die. The wages of sin is death. It's amazing to me that you choose this, this life of sin, this life of drunkenness. You're born watching. You're fornicating. I love porn gambling. I know you do. I know you love all that stuff. You're not going to love hell, though. You're not going to love burning forever in hell. And we're not here to tell you that and hope that you turn so you don't have to go to hell. You know, God doesn't rejoice in the death of the wicked. He doesn't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want you to go to hell. That's why he sent Jesus so that you could repent and not go to hell. Don't go to hell. I mean, how, how, how dumb do you have to be to know what you're doing is going to send you to hell and do it anyways? You see, I used to love drinking too. I used to love drinking too. I used to, I used to love uh, sports gambling. I was a sports idolater. I used to cuss. I used to do all these things that you guys do. I used to be right with you. I used to fornicate. 
I used to lie. He used to do all that stuff, man. And Jesus set me free of these things. And Jesus promised life and life more abundantly. But the soul who sins shall surely die. Jesus said in the Bible, now go and sin no more. The Bible commands you to go and sin no more. You can live perfect according to Jesus. You can be perfect in Jesus Christ. And if you choose to mock, you choose to deny the truth, you choose to hate the one who died for you, you choose to hate God, you choose to shake your fist at God and say that you know better, that you want to do it your way, He's going to cut you in two and appoint you your place in the lake of fire, Amen. and it's never going to end. And Jesus said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You mock now, you laugh now, but you're not going to be laughing in hell. You're going to be crying and screaming. Right. You're going to want out. And there's no way out. You have your way out now. You have your chance now. You're hearing the truth, truth now. And you don't know how much longer you have. The Bible says that your life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when your judgment day is going to come. Yep. And when it does, if you haven't repented, if you're not living holy for Jesus, you're going to be real sorry. You're going to be real sorry that you didn't listen. You're going to really regret it. Now the Bible also says, not only your drunkenness, not only drunkenness going in there, that's not the only sin that you're committing. The Bible says, huh? Talk about the sluts. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you are? Too. Whores and whoremongers, Is that too. what you are? Are you a whoremonger? I don't really know. I don't get pussy. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a homosexual. Go, go. <laughs> Must be a homo. You a homo? Huh? You a homo? Oh, you don't get either? Okay, you know, fornicator? All right. Well, you know, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the bam, world, bam, going bam, to the bam. bar, hanging out with all the other drunkards and fornicators. You, not, you might not be a fornicator. If you approve of them, that's just as bad. If you approve of the drunkard, it's just as bad. If you approve of the homo, it's just as bad. The Bible says to expose these things. It says to reprove them. It says convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. You know, we hate these things because God hates these things. It's not really my opinion. That's right. I mean, if I wanted to live my way, I'd be in line with you. Yeah. That's how I used to be. But it's not really my choice. I mean, it is my choice. I have the free will to choose it. But there's consequences for pursuing right. choices. Right. You play stupid games, you'll get stupid rewards. Yeah. Don't go to hell. Go in the bar and find a stupid That's why we're out here. But if you're a sinner, you will go and to hell. The reward for drunkenness, the reward for partying, Not a joke, the reward lady. for being a friend of the world and an enemy of God. Not a joke. Is hell. Fun and games till you find yourself in hell. Everlasting destruction. No joke. No joke. You laugh now, but I, I hope, you know, I pray that God, God works something in you guys in life. And you might have to hit rock bottom. You might have to be left with, with a week to live. Reef with cancer or something. I don't know what it's going to take for you people. I don't know what it's going to take, but you need something to happen. Right. You need something to happen. You need to choose to live for your Savior. You need to choose to obey Jesus and obey the gospel. Get a job. Get a job. I got a job, buddy. You need to repent. Quit your sin job. and stalkers will be in hell. And you won't be mocking on Judgment Day. This is better than my job, man. This is, I mean, wow. This is great. It doesn't matter. Right now, my job. He's a physician's assistant. You know, I got. You know, I have a PhD actually. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm a preacher, preacher of hellfire and damnation. There you go. I got, I got a PhD. See it? Yeah, I That's bet. Liar. Well, you said you don't use it. What's it good for? <laughs> You need to get a wife. Yeah, we didn't man. put one in his truck. You need to find a godly wife, and you're not going to find a godly woman in there. I know. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Therefore, whoever makes himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Going in that bar, you're making yourself an enemy of God. Yep. You really want to be an enemy of God? You really want to be an enemy of the I one who can destroy both body and soul in hell? I have one for taking track. The Bible says not to fear man who can destroy only the body. But fear God, who could destroy both body and soul in hell. You're going to throw your soul in hell forever, weeping and gnashing of teeth, no end. There's going to be no end.
down there. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, he who sins is a slave to sin. You guys are slaves to sin. You're a slave of the devil. Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, and the works of your father you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to work the works of the devil. You're a slave of the devil. He who commits sin is a slave to sin. You need to be a slave unto righteousness. You need to be born again. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he won't see the kingdom. You won't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Unless you depart from iniquity. I'm going to spread out over here. The Bible says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Tell you what, your purpose isn't to go into doggies tonight and get drunk. I sure hope you wake up tomorrow. If you died tonight, where would you be? Would you be in heaven or hell? Jesus is going to judge you according to your works. You need to have childlike faith in Jesus. You need to live for Jesus. You need to obey Jesus. You need to be made perfect in Jesus. You don't need to sin less. You need to go and sin no more. You need to cut it all out. You need to forsake it. And you can do it. You know, the Bible says that there's no temptation. There is no temptation that you can't bear. God has made a way of escape for every temptation that you face. Jesus himself was tempted at all points. You need to repent, man. 
If you don't repent, you're going to perish. You're going to burn in hell forever if you don't repent, buddy. Jesus died for you so that you could turn from your wickedness. So you would go and sin no more. You won't be so tough on judgment day standing before your God when your, your knee is going to bow and your tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. You won't be able to mock Him then. You'll be pretty humble, I think. You'll be pretty humble and you'll know that you deserve hell. And you know, I deserve hell too. I've broken the commandments. I, I've broken Jesus' word. But Jesus had mercy on me. And I took up his, his deal. Jesus says, if you repent and you live for me, I'll forget and forgive all your unrighteousness. And that's what he's done for me. He forgave all my unrighteousness. He forgave all my sin. And he won't hold me accountable for it anymore. But if I go and sin again, he's going to hold me accountable for it. That's why he said, go and sin no more. He doesn't just forgive and then you can continue to go and live how you want. Go to church on Sunday and think you're all good and fine because you go to church every once in a while or because you pray. You know, if you pray and you're a sinner, God doesn't even hear you. God doesn't hear your prayers if you're a sinner. John 9.31, it says, Now we know that God does not hear sinners. There's a plethora of verses that says God does not hear sinners. So just know, if you're a sinner and you pray, you're praying, there's no point in your prayers. He doesn't hear you. The only prayer of a sinner that God is going to hear is a prayer of repentance. A humble prayer of repentance that says, God, I'm sorry. I know I deserve hell. I'm wicked as hell. I'm a child of the devil, and I need to change. And I want to change. And I'm willing to give it to you. I'm willing to give all these things to you. I'm willing to forsake my way and turn and live for you, God. That's the only prayer he's going to hear from you. You know, they say there's no atheist in the foxhole. When stuff gets real, and you have nowhere else to turn but God, then you're going to want to turn to Him. But guess what? If you're in sin, He ain't going to hear you. He's not going to hear anything you have to say. You can ignore it now. That's fine. You choose to ignore Him now, He's going to ignore you on Judgment Day. It's that simple. Choose to ignore it all you want. You're heaping up yourselves wrath in the Day of Destruction, the Bible says. You're heaping up wrath for yourselves in the day of judgment. You know, the Bible commands that we live holy, that we live perfect in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 7 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You people have no fear of God. Walking around, living as you please, going in the bar, getting drunk, partying. Fornicating. I mean, it's just it's just shaking your fist in God's face, saying, I ain't scared of you. You can't tell me how to live and what to do. God. You ought to perfect holiness in the fear of God. No fear of God. You gotta forsake your sins. Yep. You must repent, or you will perish. You will burn in hell forever if you don't repent. You don't repent. We've lost the fear of God. You, you people don't fear anything. You don't fear God. Not, if you ought to fear anything, you ought to fear God. He could strike you dead right now if you wanted to. That's right. We have lost the fear of God. And that's the reason you won't repent, because you have no reason to repent. If you've ever been to church, I bet the church never told you that, that God hates you. I bet they said God loves you. Just how you are. He'll accept you just how you are. Just say you love Jesus. You know, God hates sinners. Psalms 5 5 says, You hate all workers of iniquity. God hates all the workers of iniquity. Iniquity is sin. If you're in sin, God hates you. You know, it's funny how that God that loves everybody, Jesus who loves everybody, how is he going to throw people in hell forever? If he loves me and my family is not saved, he loves me, but he's going to send my family and my friends to burn in hell forever. This tells me that God must kind of love and hate at the same time. God has a holy hatred for sin. God hates sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Matthew 5, 48 says, Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. You can be made perfect in Jesus. You can forsake your sins and live for God, and God will wreck you perfect. Perfect in Jesus. 1 John 2, 6 says, He who says he abides in God ought himself to walk just as Jesus walked. You can walk this earth just as Jesus walked it. If you're perfecting holiness in the fear of God, you know, the first step for you people would be to have a fear of God. To at least consider the fact that you might burn in hell forever. 
That'd be a good start. That'd be a good start to be to be a little fearful of God. You know, the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. First John four seventeen says, "Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world." As Jesus is, so are we in this world. You can be perfect in Jesus. Don't let any church tell you that you can't stop sinning, that you have a sinful nature and you can't conquer it. Any church that says that, I mean, they're false teachers. They don't believe in the power, the power and the blood of Jesus. They don't believe that you can conquer all your sin, that you can be an overcomer in this world. They don't believe it. If anyone tells you that you can't stop sinning, they're very, very wrong. The Bible commands that you stop sinning. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if you don't love him, if you don't repent, you know what happens. You know you're going to get hell. Paul said in Romans chapter 2, that you despise the riches of God's goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the, in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. God's going to judge you according to your deeds. God's going to judge you for tonight. If you die tonight, he's going to judge you for your deeds tonight. He's not going to remember all the old ladies you helped across the street, all the soup kitchens that you worked at. All the nice things you said, how nice of a guy you were, how nice of a person you were. God's not going to remember any of that stuff. God's going to judge you according to your works today. If you die today, where are you going to go? Well, if the wages of sin is death and you're in sin, I think you're going to get death, not eternal life. If you're committing sin, you're a slave to sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever. A slave of sin does not go to heaven. So if you die tonight in your sin, you're going to go to hell. You people don't take warnings very well. You know, the Bible commands us to be a watchman to go out and warn people of the wrath to come. I'm warning you that if you don't repent, you're going to perish. If you don't follow Jesus, you're going to walk straight to the, the lake of fire. The, the fire will never be quenched. You think that's good? Think that will be fun? It will be. Yeah? Why don't you why don't you douse yourself some gasoline and light yourself up now? It's gonna be so fun. Get it started. Yeah, weeping and gnashing of teeth forever. Sounds like a great time. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you need Jesus, man. He just died for you just like he died for me. You can have life more abundantly in Jesus. You could be forgiven and made perfect in Jesus. You won't be so arrogant on judgment day. You won't be a mocker on judgment day. You won't be mocking and thinking it's funny on Judgment Day standing before God, your Creator. He's going to judge you for tonight. He's going to judge you for your drunkenness, for your partying, for your friendship with the world. You're an enemy of God, and God hates you. God hates all workers of iniquity, the Bible says. But God wants you to repent. Jesus came so that you would repent, so you don't have to, so you don't have to perish in hell. You must perfect holiness in the fear of God. The Bible says, fear God, keep his commandments, for so this is man's all. Your purpose is to fear God. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. If Jesus commanded it, it's possible. If God commands it, it's possible. His commandments aren't burdensome. I sure hope none of you are going to church tomorrow. I sure hope nobody's going to church. You're going to church? Your church going isn't going to help you on judgment day, man. The Bible doesn't say, thou shalt go to church. Jesus said, repent. Jesus didn't say, go to church on Sunday. Jesus said, repent. He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You need to repent, man, not go to church. But you need to repent. Church isn't going to do you any good. Obviously, your church isn't working. Obviously, your church is full of false teachers. You wouldn't come to, to a church that preaches the truth. You wouldn't keep going back. You wouldn't keep going back to that church. Where can I buy a sweatshirt like that? 
Uh, PreachingGear.com. Thank you. Yeah. What denomination are you guys? We don't have a denomination. We're just Bible or Bank Christians. Yeah. Which one? King James? Or? Yeah, King James, New King James. Okay. Yeah. We sure, we sure aren't Catholic. <laughs> no, not Catholic. What's wrong with being Catholic? Well, Catholics pray to Mary. Catholics believe there's a purgatory. Catholics uh, pray to saints. Catholics go to the pedophile priests. They intercede with saints. Catholics uh, look up to a man. They put a man at the, at the head, the Pope. You can't follow the Pope. I get the point of organizing it, but once it gets that powerful, it's kind of, it goes against all the religious. Yeah, there's no popes in the Bible. There's no popes or cardinals in the Bible. Well, I agree with that. Yeah, and I mean, the pope now is wicked. I mean, I've seen the videos of the transgenders and the sodomites and homos and, I mean, everything. And he, they approve of it. That's the issue. The Catholic Church doesn't believe that you need to go and sin no more than Jesus said. The Catholic Church believes that, you know, if you go to confession and uh, tell, you, tell a man about your sins, tell some, some guy about your sins, then it's going to be all right. Is that repenting? Is that repenting? No, repenting is, is, so I used to be a drunkard, I used to go and get drunk. I repented of my drunkenness. Yeah, well, friendship with the world is enmity with God. And friendship with the world is enmity with God. The Bible says, therefore, whoever makes himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Yeah, so the bar is of the world. The Bible says, do not love the world or the things of the world. The bar is of the world, so. No, but repenting, if I'm repenting for my drunkenness, I ask God for forgiveness of getting drunk, and then I don't get drunk anymore. You know, if I punch you in the gut, and I say, hey man, I'm sorry, and then I kept punching you in the gut, I'm probably not really sorry. And God knows if you're, uh, if you're genuine or not. God knows genuine repentance from a lie. Well, I mean, it's, it's a real, real slippery slope. Uh, drunkenness is a sin, but the Bible also says that we should abstain from the mere appearance of evil. You know, if someone, if I'm a Christian and someone sees me having a drink, maybe they'll think it's okay to have a drink and get drunk. You know, you don't know. My question is, what's the point in drinking alcohol if you're, if you're not, you know, there's certainly no point going to the bar with all the other sinners and having a drink. Definitely not. Yes, Jesus drank wine, but the Bible says do not be drunk on wine. We need to repent, ladies. You know, the Bible says that, that people would say things like that. Ladies don't speak this way. Yeah, a godly woman wouldn't speak that way. You need to clean up your mouth. So how do you repent? Just pray to God? Yeah, you have to be humble. You have to uh, be willing to give up your sin. You pray to God. That's, Jesus is your advocate with the Father. You know, back in the, back before Jesus uh, was set, you know, he was dying on the cross, People had to sacrifice animals. We don't have to do that anymore. I mean, Jesus made it easy for you. You could go and hit your knees tonight, pray to Jesus, forsake your sins, live for Him, change your ways, turn and live, and He'd forgive you. I mean, it's that simple. Repenting is asking for forgiveness, hating your sin, turning from it, and living for God. Repentance is a change of mind. It's not, it's not a, uh, a worldly, I'm sorry. The Bible says that a godly sorrow produces repentance. Where are you going? You know, you might, you might cheat on your girlfriend or something, and the consequences of that are bad, and you know, you have a worldly sorrow over it. Or you got her pregnant, you have a worldly sorrow because the consequences of your actions aren't what you want in this world. But a godly sorrow produces repentance. A godly sorrow you feel so bad about yourself, you know that you're, you're disgusting before God, and you need to change. You realize you need to change. You have a godly sorrow over this stuff. You repent genuinely. You turn from your sins and you stop doing them. Just like Jesus said. He said, go and sin no more. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. In Hebrews, it says that Jesus Christ became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. Not all those who say, I love Jesus. You know, First John says, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Then it says, he who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Are you a liar? Do you say you love God? 
When you say you love God, if you say you love God and you don't keep His word, you're a liar, the Bible says. And all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. All liars, all sinners will have their part in the lake of fire. The Bible says the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Sin is what makes you unrighteous. Sin is what separates you from God. Sin is the reason that God won't hear your prayers at night. Sin separates you from God. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And the only way out of death is repentance and a childlike faith. And Jesus Christ, your Savior, that's the only way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. And he said, repent, or you will all likewise perish. He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you remember anything tonight, remember that you need to repent. You need to confess and forsake your sins and you'll be forgiven. Everybody wants to be forgiven, but nobody wants to be cleansed of their sins. They want God to give them a free pass into heaven, say, yeah, you're good to enter, but they don't want to be cleansed of their unrighteousness. 